What's going on everybody? My name is Seth and you're watching 252 Squad and behind me is my 2013 Ford Mustang GT and unfortunately for me and for this car it has a very very broken third gear in my MT-82 transmission. One, two, three! So guys, in today's video, we're going to be fixing this transmission with an install of the T56 Magnum XL transmission. This is going to be an in-depth video of how to install it, how to take your MT-82 out, how to put the T56 Magnum in, how I'm going to be doing it, how I've got it programmed and everything using Lund Racing as my tuner. Uh, as you can see, I'm full bolt-on, so I've already got them as my tuner, but we're just going to piggyback on that with the LRX tuning device as well as other parts, which let's get into what we got for the swap. So as you can see, the main part is the box below. It is the T56 Magnum itself. It is a full unit kit. It comes with the shifter, the mount bracket, the bell housing, as well as the adapter that mounts in between the bell housing and the engine block itself. On top, we have a drive shaft shop, one piece uh, drive shaft with the yoke for the T56's output and the input for the rear differential of the Ford 88 that comes factor in these Mustangs. The next thing we have here is a Bowler all-in-one system. This thing here is a module box that's gonna connect the vehicle speed sensor and the output shaft speed sensor as well as everything else wiring wise that comes with the MTD2 to be able to allow it to run with the factory PCM and the T56. And finally, we have the clutch here. This is a McLeod clutch. This is a 26 spline clutch. We're converting from the 23 spline of the factory MT82 cars to the 26 spline that comes with the T56 Magnums. Um, so this is pretty much a simple rundown. We also are gonna have transmission fluid, which you're gonna see right here. The last thing is going to be the transmission fluid. That which we're using is this Valvoline Dex Merc. This does cover the Dextron 3, as you can see right there, which is what's recommended by Tremec. So this is the fluid we're gonna be using. So we got the car on the lift already, getting ready to start with the installation process. First off, we're gonna start on the interior of the car. We're gonna go ahead and start taking apart the shifter assembly, the factory shifter assembly, or in my case, my MGW shifter assembly, and go ahead and get the top side ready so we can go ahead and drop the transmission out the bottom. So uh, let's get into the inside. Now inside of the car, like I said, we're gonna start with the shifter assembly here. So my factory one is gone. It is with the MGW now. So we're gonna take that off by loosening the screw right here and then we're going to go ahead and pull everything out so we can get to the shifter box the factory one's going to be the same you're going to twist it off it's going to loosen a little bit you're going to be able to pull the shifter box out through there the other easiest way is to opening this cover here and then pulling up and that's what's going to be able to disconnect this whole piece here so essentially what you're going to do is take and stick your hand in here and then you're just going to pull up like this and it's going to pop out and then you can take it and lift it up out and around the shifter down there so now that i got everything out i removed all of the insulation padding that goes around here um, to access the actual box. Uh, now, the workshop manual that Ford provides tells you to take the shifter box out. What I'm going to do is actually unbolt it from the bottom side. Even if you have the factory shifter, you can do it this way and leave this entire mechanism here. You can actually still drop it down and have clearance right here on the transmission tunnel. So we're just going to leave it like this with everything disconnected so it can go down through the car. Currently, I have everything disconnected on the inside and up top as far as that goes. So we're going to go ahead and lift the car up and get to the underside. So coming along and starting on the underside of the vehicle here, I'm going to start by removing the X-pipe on the vehicle. This is an aftermarket X-pipe that I have installed. Um, so that is going to be coming down. And then next after that, we'll be getting out the drive shaft. My car does have an aftermarket for performance one piece drive shaft, but the factory one is going to have a loop up there that you are going to remove the bolts for. And it is a two piece that comes out similar to the one, the original one that I have right down there. Uh, but all of this has to come out. So it's really simple. It's just gonna be these two bolts for me right here, as well as these four back here. These will be the same on the factory one. And these should be similar. And then you can remove your factory H pipe or X pipe or whatever you have. And then just these four bolts on this side. And then these bolts that connect on the drive shaft down. So we have Sean under here. He is currently wrenching on these Allen bolts to get the drive shaft out there. I have got the exhaust removed here as well as the flange bolts up top here. So while he's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and start disconnecting all of the electrical connectors, including this one here, as well as all the catalytic converter O2 sensors that are connected up there, as well as this one here. So we're gonna go ahead and start getting those disconnected there while he works on that. So up in here, we have gotten all the electrical connectors disconnected as far as that goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by removing this brace here for the next step. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. Now these catalytic converters, they do tell you to take out, but you can leave them out. It just does take a little bit of finagling and finessing to get them out. But as far as that goes, you can still do that. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do on this one. So I ended up getting that brace off up here. 
as you can see there i did move ahead and go with the starter as well so the starter is sitting right here the way i normally get to it is through the front side here so going through this hole through here using some extensions and a wobble with a 10 millimeter and you can get to the bolts that hold that in as far as that goes and then i removed the brace on the back side so the four 18 millimeter bolts there and then three 15s that go into the back side to remove this brace right here for the factory mt82 so next i'm gonna go ahead and start lowering it down get my mgw off i still have not pulled the drive shaft completely yet uh, and then make sure everything up top is good to go Alrighty, as you can see, I got the MGW shifter off the back there. I have put a ratchet strap around the transmission to hold it for support. Now I'm going to go ahead and start by removing the bell housing bolt and hopefully get this transmission out of here. So we finally got the pile of garbage, I mean the MT-82 out of the car. And uh, so now we're getting ready to get the McLeod out. Like I said, this is the 23 spline. We're replacing that with the 26 spline for the uh, T-56. And then I got to pull the flywheel, which I'm going to reuse. Uh, it's literally got like 700 miles on it. So I'm going to reuse that um, with the new clutch and go ahead and start putting everything back in. And that'll be a little bit more descriptive than what we've done so far. So stay tuned. Sir, I thought we've been here like yeah, no more than a month ago. Yeah, less than a month ago I put this clutch in. So this is going great. So our dowel pin came out of the transmission weird and it got burned up quite badly there on the outside edge as you can see a little bit there. So uh, now we're going to use this grinder here and try to clean it up so it'll go back into the T56 a little bit better. So currently we are getting the torque set on the flywheel. We are using the factory specifications of 20 newton meters of torque and then doing a 60 degree turn on it. We're going to go ahead and get that torque down and uh, we got the new plate behind it too. That's one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, but we have a holder tool in there holding the flywheel from being able to turn. So we're going to go ahead and get it torqued down right fast. So at this part in the video, the audio cut out in the shop. It wasn't as good as I would like. So at this point, I'm just going to do a little voiceover. Um, here we are installing the bell housing itself, the SFI approved bell housing, uh, to get it around the catalytic converters because we left those in. You kind of got to twist it down with the right hand side, the starter side up, and then twist it up and then in to work it in to get it to lock down into place. And then as you can see by him hitting on it, once you get it onto the dowels, a few little hits, it'll slide right on those dowel pins. Now with everything installed, we got all the bolts and hardware and I just want to go over a few of the things. So as you can see up here towards the O2 sensor, right above the bolt that I'm pointing to here, um, there is a spacer that you have to put in to clear the bell housing on one of those bolts. Um, as you can see, there's one there and then on the right hand side near the starter location there, there's another one. I'll show that a little bit better in a future bit, but right up here where I'm shining the light to, you can see a little bit there, there's like a half moon spacer that goes on the right hand side above the starter in between that bolt there. And that's gonna allow you to be able to fit it. And now all these bottom bolts just have a bolt on one side and a nut with a lock washer. Um, so you wanna do it like that. So a washer and then lock washer on the nut side. And then I just tighten those all up to the spec that Tremec provides in the instructions manual um, as far as that goes. Now the bell housing's on, getting ready to put the T56 in. So you'll see us doing that in the next clip. Psych, I lied. In this clip, you're actually going to see us installing the baller part here onto the transmission itself. So the one sensor goes down and then the other one plugs in near the rear shifter assembly for the reverse lockout. I'm just going to go ahead and leave the module box sitting there without plugging it in all the way. I'm um, just running it around and then I'm going to bolt it right there into that that little bolt spot there. Um, leave all this wiring dangling. That way, when I go to put the transmission up, it's not in the way and then I can connect all those wires in the future. So at this point, we're getting the air gap set on the throw out bearing here. Um, so at this point, I just bolted it in. I'm actually going to make another video talking about the air gap because I didn't actually set it at this point and it caused my throw out bearing to pop. Um, so you want to get that air gap set. Um, there's a few videos. I followed Mantic steps on how to set the proper preload, but that's what we did right here. Now we're going to put it up into the car. So you can see we're lifting everything up. That air gap is set. Um, we just eased the transmission on. I did pump the throw out bearing full of fluid, which was making the transmission push back out when the um, actual part was hitting 
the throwout bearing is pushing. So we got everything in, a few bolts in, and then it pulled itself so on. So at this point, we have got all the wiring hooked up and organized the way it should be. We got the two red with black stripe wires, as you can see here a little bit. Let's see if I can get it to zoom in. The two wires that are red with black stripe, we have those ran to the two pin connector for the reverse light. And then moving along, this is the connector set up for the uh, actual module for the signal. So we have the black wire going to the white with pan or pan with blue stripe connector there, as well as the, uh, I ran the purple with white to the uh, tan with green line, and then the purple uh, wire into the red wire there. Um, they do have a description chart and Ballard's website, but I did go ahead and just run it like this. Um, and uh, this is the way I did it. So essentially purple and white to tan and green, black to tan and blue, and red to purple. So that's how I did it there. Um, and that's how it's hopefully gonna work for me. So after getting the wiring installed, I went ahead and installed the brace that comes with the kit that bolts into the actual bottom of the transmission using the bolt, the lock washer, and then a washer. So that is on both sides. Then I loosely did these two bolts, and then that allowed me to lift the transmission using the jack, get these started. Then you have to go ahead and tighten these and then tighten these down to the torque. Uh, I just use my impact gun, which normally works for these bolts. Now while I did that, I also went ahead and reinstalled the starter motor you can see is right there so the starter motor has been reinstalled and then before I even lifted it up or finished lifting it up I went ahead and got the shifter in from the bottom side it's probably easier to do from the top side than what I did here so I made my life a little bit harder so I'd recommend doing it from the top side but I went ahead and got it before I lifted it up so now I think I'm going to get ready to install the drive shaft and finish tightening up the bar that goes across there so for the transmission fluid, I'm just gonna use some Dex Merc. This is automatic transmission fluid. Uh, this is essentially compatible with the GM Dextron 3 there, and that is what's recommended in the transmission from Trimic. So we're gonna use this Valvoline stuff here. I did read in through some forums that they said that any generic brand would work, but Valvoline seems to be one of the better generic brands that you can get off the shelf. It's also not too bad, it's about $12 a quart. You're gonna need about four quarts. I got five just in case it needs a little bit more, but I'm gonna go ahead and fill this thing up and uh, should be that. Fill the transmission up with fluid. What I'm going to be using is one of these generic transmission fill pumps. You can get these at Harbor Freight or any type of uh, store mainly. They actually, a lot of them carry this. What you do is you actually just screw this onto the lid of the bottle and then you can pump it into the fill port, which is actually right here on the side. You can see it is even cast in there saying fill. So I'm going to put you on a time lapse and we'll go ahead and fill this up. You know it's truly full when it starts flowing out and making a big mess in the floor. So uh, be careful of that, but that is how you know it is full is when it starts coming right back out. So now we have gotten the car down on the ground. We have a vacuum system here pulling a vacuum on the brake reservoir there. And that is actually allowing us to bleed the clutch faster. If you do not, you can do it by manually doing it yourself. It is pumping the clutch repeatedly for quite some time. But this actually shortens the process quite a bit by pulling the vacuum and then it allows it to get stiffer. So we got the vehicle back on the ground. The clutch has been bled using the uh, vacuum bleed system. Uh, everything went well there, no issues. We went ahead and got the car running, uh, picked it up on the lift and verified that everything worked as far as the vehicle going through gears. Uh, we did load onto the LRX, the new Luntoon, and then I also went through the Valor app that you can download that they give you when you buy the kit, verified uh, our input, the rear gear ratio, the tire height into it, and then there was the Tremec T56 Magnum. They went ahead and pre-programmed according to the wire setup that I had ran. This had the tune from Lund uh, for the T56 in it, and then so I just lifted it up, put it in first gear and verified that the speedometer between the Valor app and this and the speedometer of the car were all reading the same, which they were, that the reverse lockout was working, that all the reverse lights were working. And I verified that all of the inputs through the Valor app were working, which they were intact and working fine as far as the wiring at all that I did goes. Uh, I went ahead and reassembled the center console. I did end up cutting my boot for my MGW, so that's why the boot is not intact there. But I got the new Tremec shift knob in and everything as far as that goes, no issues there. So uh, I'm gonna ready to take it for a quick test drive and make sure everything goes well. So as you can see behind me with the car in the driveway here, the T56 swap is done. Now, there is a few things I wanna talk about with the T56 swap and a few little problems I went through that I didn't really go over too much while doing the process of the swap video here. And that is starting off number one is setting your air gap right. 
when you're putting the throwout bearing onto the transmission. I did not do that the first time around and I ended up causing some premature throwout bearing problems and it ended up requiring me to pull the transmission back out. I do have another video coming out about all of that explaining what I did to fix it and how it's been since then. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's doing pretty good right now. The last thing I wanna mention about it is the fact that I got a 297 ratio first gear transmission. Um, if you're going for boost or anything like that, I've heard to recommend for a 266. Uh, it closes the third to fourth ratio. I will say that with my transmission and my gear ratios, my third to fourth, if you don't shift above 2000 RPMs, it bogs the car down quite a bit. And then I haven't really used it for a pool because my third gear gets to 130. And I'm not doing that on the street right now on an NA setup. Um, but as far as the rest of it goes, it is wild. You can do a 40 to 100 pull in second gear and it's really nutty and I, I like it a lot you have to shift one time doing a 60 to 130 pull which is insane but overall guys that's pretty much going to be it I do have to say that the swap is very much worth it the level of difficulty is not very high if you have a lift it can be done within 10 hours and that is with the wiring the tuning and everything all together it's really not that bad of a swap if you've ever pulled a transmission before and as far as the comparison between the MT82 and the T56 I'll have a more in-depth video coming out about that but I will say that it is definitely worth the money it is a great transmission and a great upgrade definitely makes the car feel significantly better than what it was with the MT82 powered and so all I've got to say is it's worth the money it's worth the time you should go do it on your car and follow this guide right here make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Mustang content as well as Honda content maybe even truck content who knows but I thank y'all so much for watching. I hope y'all have a great rest of y'all's day. Peace out, and I'll see you later.